Medical workers of Reddit. What's the dumbest thing you've seen a person do as an attempt to self-treat a medical condition? I used to work in a lab in a hospital in a rural town. I got a stool sample from the air that was basically a blood clot the size of a golf ball. Sometimes the air gets mixed up and sends me the wrong specimen, like some kind of body fluid and labeled it as urine, for example. I called the patient's nurse and asked what the deal was with the patient and if it was really stool they sent up. The nurse I talked to said the patient thought he'd eaten bad pork and to prevent food poisoning, drank a concoction of bleach, rubbing alcohol, vodka, ibuprofen and some tums. Say what you will, but he didn't come to the air with food poisoning. As an EMT basic student I responded to a man who called 911 complaining of a insect crawling up his ear. Upon arrival we ask what ear the bug crawled into. He says his right ear, but keeps complaining about burning coming from his left ear. We noticed his wife standing next to him holding a bottle of insect spray. Upon further questioning we come to find out she sprayed insecticide into his left ear thinking it would flush the insect out of his right ear. I had to explain to her that our ear canals are separated by our brain. In some cases. Med student. A guy came into the emergency department with two combs and a toothbrush in his butt. He had stuck the toothbrush up there for pleasure, but lost it. He tried to fish it out with a comb, but lost that, and tried again with a second comb, and lost that as well. The kicker, he was there because he had gotten in a car crash. He wasn't there to get the stuff out of his butt. He volunteered the information after we asked if there was anything else we needed to know. My diabetic grandpa used to eat all the bread sugar he wanted, and then eat lemon drops after everything. According to him, the real lemon juice acid would counteract the sugar he had just eaten. He was convinced. The nurses disagreed and fought with him for years, but eventually gave in and let him do what he wanted because he was 97 and the food made him happy. At 97 long term damage is kind of moot. We are a needle exchange harm reduction station at the clinic I work at. We have IV drug users come in pretty frequently to get their abscesses cleaned out and dress properly. So one patient comes in wanting to get her abscess cleaned out like many other patients before her. We take her back to her procedure room and get everything ready to start. She has an ace bandage covering up this spot on her arm so of course we are thinking it's fine because that's better than just letting it be open to the air. She proceeds take off said bandage and exposes not only huge abscess but a 4 inch length of vein sticking out of her arm that is rotting away and drying up. We are like, ah uh, what's going on here and she says she took it out of her abscess and left it out because it made injecting drugs easier. So basically she ran her own IV with a vein she cut out of her abscess. We then called the ambulance. Holy frick. A friend of mine got drunk at a party and had unprotected sex with a girl he'd just met. After he stumbled home he realized what he'd done and tried to fix the problem by dunking his junk into a cup of Listerine. He's now a pharmacist and very proactive about giving advice to dumb looking teens stumbling around the family planning aisle after midnight. 911 dispatch here. Heard the story second hand, but kid had a crazy high fever and wouldn't stop crying. Paramedics get on scene. And mom is squeezing a lemon while rubbing it all over the baby's forehead because it's supposed to keep the fever down. Mom was completely at a loss as to why the baby wouldn't stop crying either. It couldn't possibly be the lemon juice you've essentially been squeezing into its eyes for the last 20 minutes. No siree. Trijaren people have ridiculous number of fever remedies. My favorites are rubbing alcohol over the entire body which can cause coma. And applying cut onions to the bottom of the feet. A 60 year old woman self diagnosed herself with leg cancer and decided to treat it herself by periodically squeezing the cancer out of a centimeter wide hole in her leg. Yeah, that was a pretty stupid one. Leg cancer. A friend of mine super glued his teeth back into his mouth after drunken shenanigans once. Sounds cheaper than dental insurance. My patient was instilling honey in his eyes to treat his cataracts and glaucoma. Right. Yes he came in for conjunctivitis cause bacteria were having a party on his corneas. Patient comes into the ED with an abscess. Tells us he knew he had an infection and so ate a pound and a half of raw steak to get the antibiotics that were given to the cow. I had a patient treating her lung cancer with a sonic emitter. Her argument was that sound waves can shatter glass, so lung cancer wouldn't stand a chance. 
Well it wasn't really to treat a medical condition but I did see a guy get a pneumothorax, collapsed lung, when he tried to pierce his nipple using a nail gun, he aim was off a bit. RN, I've seen more than a few people use butter to treat burns, don't. Diabetic patient, went to vacation in the Caribbean, left her insulin on a cruise ship, hasn't taken any for a week, gets back to states and Medicaid won't pay for lost or stolen meds, and she refuses to pay for another bottle, because she doesn't have any money, realizes that no insulin equals more sugar in blood, somehow gets the idea in her head that more sugar in blood means that her blood is now thicker so she decides to take a bunch of Plavix, Warfarin, and Aspirin, all blood thinners that cause bleeding and high doses can and will lead to internal bleeding and death, to thin her blood, I get the story when she comes into the pharmacy to get refills on her warfarin and plavix and ask her why she needs those early, told her to immediately go to the air, I have no idea if she actually did. My college biochem professor told me that warfarin's original purpose was to kill pests like rats by making them bleed out, it's amazing what proper dosages can accomplish. I had a patient come to the ear complaining of severe pain and swelling all down there. On physical examination we noted a really remarkable amount of swelling, and both the internal and external tissues were extremely red and irritated. She was so swollen she couldn't even pee until we put a catheter in. The physician did a pelvic exam and found blisters on her cervix. We asked when the symptoms started. She said, well it was itching tonight, I thought I had a yeast infection, so I poured a cup of bleach up in there to kill it, but then after a while it kind of started to hurt, yeah, I bet it did. Animal attendant for a vet clinic here, a client came in and had rubber banded their two dogs ball sacks as a way of neutering them, very 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 bad, they got the idea from how sheep and goats can be neutered. But there is a huge difference between the junk of a sheep and a chihuahua. Both of the dogs had a severe infection and the tissue was completely dead. The treatment for this cost way I, I, I more than the neuters would have been. Do not do this ever ever. Had a frequent flyer patient who had psoriasis so bad that he literally had huge scales all over his legs. One day he gets admitted and the scales are gone. He tells me he took a Brillo pad, steel wool, and scraped them all off. Surprisingly it works with no adverse effects and he's still scale free a year later. I worked overnights in a midwesterner and I have seen two men try to treat their erectile dysfunction on their own. One man used cork in his urethra and then it dried and cracked like pencil lead and only the one stroke 4 inch at the tip came out. He had another 3 inches or so all broken into pieces that required surgery to get out. The other man used a clipped off piece of coat hanger to try to keep himself erect during sex and that also had to be surgically removed. Dudes is weird. Ask for Viagra. An elderly lady brought her husband in with severe diarrhea. She had stoppered his anus with a 2000 rubber cork. He died of sepsis. I'm an RN and at the time I was working in the emergency room. It was fairly late at night and a woman came in with severe vaginal bleeding. Apparently she decided to use a light bulb as a dildo and got it in, but couldn't get it back out. She decided the best course of action was to hit it with a hammer to break it and pull out the pieces. I wouldn't consider that self-treating but it certainly was the dumbest thing I've ever seen anyone do. I'm not a medical worker, but I once watched a guy put hand sanitizer in his eyes to avoid pink eye in basic training. Our drill instructors would routinely tell us to rub hand sanitizer around, around, our eyes to avoid pink eye. Still seemed easier to just use it on your dang hands and not touch your face. I once shared living quarters with medics at a small outpost in Afghanistan. Whenever they weren't busy otherwise they'd see as many locals as they could. I'm working in the back room one day when I overhear this little gem of a conversation. Patient, through interpreter, I caught an STD recently during a vacation in Pakistan. Context, the locals tend to look at Pakistan like Americans view Las Vegas, a way to get away from it all for uninhibited hedonism when desired. Medic, how bad are the flaroops? Patient, pretty bad, but I'm trying to treat it naturally. I lean in at this point, ready for whatever explanation is coming. Long silence from the medic who is trying to process the situation. Medic, how, does one treat a STD naturally? Patient, I'm eating a lot of cheese. Ophthalmologist here, I've had a patient who would rewet her contact lenses when they felt dry by putting them in her mouth. 
ended up with a central corneal ulcer requiring a transplant. I've seen people do this. My mom used to until I was old enough to get contacts and call her out on how seriously stupid it was. This shouldn't technically count, but it's close enough. I know someone that tried to kill themselves by drinking antifreeze, ethylene glycol. She also tried to put the icing on the cake by drinking a handle of vodka. The funny thing about ethylene glycol poisoning is that alcohol is the antidote for it, so she ended up just feeling like crap in the air for a while. I had a friend try to do the same thing. When I explained to him that drinking alcohol was what saved his life that day he replied with impossible. Alcohol thins the blood which makes the antifreeze enter the bloodstream quicker. After laughing for a little while I asked him where he got that information. I wasn't so surprised when he replied with the internet. Dentist reporting in. I had a guy who had tried to pry his own tooth out with a screwdriver. It did not go well. Everyone knows the proper method is to use pliers. Self-diagnosis. They were in for a CAT scan for abdominal pain. Patient began to tell me how they were pretty sure it was uterine torsion as they researched it online and they were 110% sure this was the issue. Sorry to tell you. Sir, I am 100% sure you do not have a uterus. Pour straight bleach onto poison ivy, at the suggestion of a pharmacy tech. Pharmacy tech here. We are not, by law, allowed to give out medical advice. And with good reason, we don't have the education pharmacists have. If a tech tries to counsel you, don't take it. Perfect example here. GP here. The most outrageous thing I've heard was from a boy who was something like 20, 22 years old. Very poor, illiterate family. The boy had a bad case of tonsillitis and refused to take any meds because all he needed to do was bite the sun. Basically at noon he had to look up to the sun. Open his mouth as wide as possible and bite the sun several times so it would burn his tonsils and cure him over the course of a couple weeks. When that wouldn't work, plan B was to do the same at night but only under a full moon. I work in a retirement home, and I caught one of my residents with a spoon inside her butt. Apparently she tried to cure her constipation by sticking a spoon up her booty and trying to scoop the poop out. To be fair if you have horrible constipation that starts to sound reasonable very quickly. I'm an MD. I saw a patient with cancer get convinced by his chiropractor to stop his chemo and just get naturopathic adjustments instead. He stopped his chemo and thought he was getting better because he was no longer getting the chemo side effects. He died. An 8 year old tripped on the cord of a deep fryer. Spilling hot grease on his shoulder and arm. His grandma slathered him in butter to cool him off and draw the heat out. When my medic partner and I entered the house and started assessing the boy, I was saddened and hungry at the same time. The poor kid smelled absolutely delicious. No cannibal. A tech here. A man came in with his wife because he had been bleeding from his bum. He thought that the best way was to self anesthetize with alcohol, lubricate the area, and cauterize with a curling iron. He actually got it a fair way up before he pulled it out, judging by how much of his rectum turned KFC. We had to remove about a foot of GI tract due to burnt, scarred tissue. The worst part was that didn't even stop the bleeding, which originated farther up the GI tract than the iron would ever reach. There is also the story about a champagne bottle popping off inside someone. But that's another story. You have been visited by Rich Jackie. If you subscribe he will bless you with lots of cash. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.